Hello, Critter Ed TV fans. Welcome back to another amazing episode filmed on location here at the Tank of Verde Therapeutic Zoo. I'm your host, Jet Dodds, and I'm here with my main man, my cool dude, always hanging 10, Clint Elliott. Jed, you just went to San Diego, didn't you? I did, and I had so much fun. <laughs> I can tell, but you do know that people from San Diego don't talk like that. What? I was out there shredding waves, hanging 10. No, that's not a thing? No, not really. No. Okay, well, we were supposed to be off this week because a heat wave is hitting Tucson, and once it gets this hot, it's really dangerous to bring animals out. So we weren't yeah. gonna film, but Clint, you had a pretty amazing critter experience. What what happened? Oh, we did. Anybody who's seen our prior episodes knows that we have both rabbits and chickens, and that I built like this Fort Knox structure for them so that predators can't get in. Well, somehow a predator got in. Nature finds a way. I mean, it always uh, does. And does. Like, like you said, you've really built this thing to keep them out. Um, and we do, I mean, this is a native ecosystem. So there's a right. lot of animals that, bobcats and mountain lions and snakes. So w what did you find? Well, it's important to understand that here in Arizona, because of the heat in the summer, there's a huge tunnel network below our feet. Literally a city of animals live underground during the day. Well, what happened was the tunnel network got underneath our structure, underneath my Fort Knox, and somehow a rattlesnake got underneath the bunny enclosure. Now, that's potentially dangerous. Now, I knew this because we walked into the enclosure and saw a snake head sticking out of a crack so thin that you would not believe a snake head could even get through. So Clint, we obviously don't want the rattlesnake inside the rabbit and chicken habitat. So right. what did you do? Well, it was a little bit complicated. Okay, mm -hmm. tell me you got video. Absolutely. All right, well, let's go to video and check out how Clint got the rattlesnake out of the habitat and relocated it. Come on. It's important to understand the snake couldn't get at the bunnies at this point, but it's still potentially dangerous for the rabbits. So what we did was I pulled the board up off of a pallet that we had in there that the enclosure was sitting on. Oh, there it is. You see it? Yep. Yeah, oh, I see it. It's huge. Yeah, it's a big one. I don't know if it's the same one that we filmed prior, but it's definitely taken up residence under there. Yep. That's huge. Let me see if I can get it out just like that. Oh, yeah, let's. Uh... That's... I don't, think you're, I don't think it's going to come out doubled up. Probably. What'd you say? Well, that's... Okay, all right. We want to back out, though, Gemma. Yeah, that's true. All right. Take yeah, I'm just going to let it pull back a little bit. Take there, I chicken. got it. Oh. Yeah. I've got it. Now, this should come right out without any trouble at all. It's going to be trouble, I think. No, 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 no. I got it. Oh my gosh! Look at that, guys! <laughs> Holy moly! What a beautiful animal. Mm. Gorgeous. This is not the same snake. That's huge! This is not the same snake that we filmed. Oh my gosh. This is much smaller. Is there another one under there? Uh, well, I'll check. Just keep an eye out, alright? Oh well, first let's gosh. go... Let's go relocate him. Well, we're going to relocate him, but we're going to find a container to put him in. Because I'm not going to relocate him in the daylight. No. Okay. So we're fine. Now Why? you can see... Just put him in the wood pile. Per usual, I am not squeezing too tight. You can see he's flicking his tongue. Yeah, he can still open his mouth. Yeah, he can still open his mouth. I'm supporting his body. He can turn his head. Again, these are not strong snakes. It doesn't take much to immobilize them. They're generally not aggressive. You can see he's not rattling his tail. Now, you can see, if you get real close on his tail, you can see that his rattle is broken off, or her rattle is broken off. And that is one of the reasons why you cannot tell the age of a rattlesnake from the number of segments that they have of their rattle. But also, shed rates vary. So, just in general, you can't tell the age of a snake by looking at its rattle. But it's okay. a beautiful animal. Wow. 
look at those colors. Definitely a diamond back, even though it's kind of lacking the diamond shape pattern. Yeah. Maybe it's getting ready to shed. It's very well fed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, Clint, so far this is amazing footage of amazing you stuff. relocating this rattlesnake. Now, in the film, we see that you and Susan are having a conversation about the time to release it. And mm -hmm. what, what were your thoughts on that? Well, this happened in real time, remember? And Susan and I are a team. We almost always talk things through. And if you're there, we talk them over with you. And uh, the thought process for me was that we should wait to release the snake because it was going to be very hot that day. And as we talked about earlier, rattlesnakes stay underground during the heat of the day in the summer. Well, Susan pointed out that we had an area here at the ranch about 40 yards away, full shade, lots of ground squirrel holes, and that it would be a perfect place to release a snake immediately without giving it undue stress of putting it in a plastic container until night. So that's what we decided to do. I love that you guys are always thinking about the safety of the animals, yeah. even one that a lot of people are scared of, the rattlesnake, a venomous snake. Mm -hmm. um, we still want to make sure that that animal is comfortable and is in a safe space. Now, you said that the release site was only about 40 yards away. That's right. really important for a snake if you're going to relocate, right? It really is. If you re relocate any snake within its home range, it has a very high chance of surviving. If you relocate it outside of that range, which is about a half a mile in diameter, the chances of it dying are almost 100%. So a rattlesnake, obviously, again, a venomous snake. We want to handle very carefully. We want to make sure that no, none of you guys ever pick up a venomous snake right. or any wildlife unless you absolutely know what you're doing. Um, we have the release video, and you are always cautious of making sure that, one, the animal is safe, and then you and everyone around are safe. So why don't we go to that video and see uh, how we release the rattlesnake. Let's go. So we're going to walk over to a part of the ranch that is undeveloped. There's a wood pile over there and we're gonna let it go so it can get out of the sun and stay cool until tonight. And then hopefully it'll have another uh, den that it can get into. So let's go. All right guys, we're here at a release site. Now it's daytime. The last time I did this was at night with a larger snake. Um, so this one's a little smaller and they tend to be a little more feisty the smaller they are. The babies are really quite feisty as you might have noticed from the, uh, from the episode where I released a baby in the different part of the ranch. Um, so I'm going to see if this one takes a defensive stance uh, like the baby did and rattle its tail or if it's going to just kind of sit there and then crawl off like the larger one did. It'll be kind of neat to see. Either way, I'm gonna release it the same way. I'm gonna put its full weight of its body on the ground, and then I'm gonna let go and step back all at once. So, right over here in the shade. And on a count of three. One, two, three. And it's off. Bye, Snake. It did not coil up, it did not rattle. Let's see if you can get a little closer. Yeah, Mom, get closer. Come on, Mom, get closer. <laughs> get closer, Mom. Bye, Snake. Just calmly crawling off. Beautiful animal. She's a beauty. Crikey. I think that the snake is close to a shed cycle. Its eyes are not cloudy but uh, its pattern's very dull, and a lot of times that can mean that a snake is about to shed. Uh, the other snakes that I've handled all had a much brighter pattern, where you could really see the diamondback. Really, the only way you can tell this is a diamondback is from the very clear white and black stripes on its tail. All right, go forth and make baby snakes. Well, another successful relocation of a rattlesnake. Clint, amazing job as always. Now, how do we know that the rattlesnake won't come back to that same spot? Well, we took very definitive steps to make sure that the gap underneath that pallet was completely filled. So there is no way a snake can come back up in, even if there's an extensive tunnel network underneath it. Now, 
Clint, during this time, we've been saying that you're going to be doing a scorpion challenge yeah. where you're going to be trying to find and pick up our amazing uh, desert scorpions. But it sounds like you're doing a rattlesnake challenge. Hey, listen, it's nature. Nature presents itself in crazy ways. You take advantage of it when you can. This opportunity came up, and so rattlesnakes before scorpions, but we will get back to scorpions very soon, I promise. Well, amazing job, and make sure again that you guys don't go picking up any wild animals unless you absolutely know what you're doing. And we'll see you next episode here on Critter Ed TV, where fear becomes wonder and wonder becomes passion. Bye guys. Bye guys. Thank you.